Good morning, friends. Uh, let us start uh, our lessons. Uh, continue from the contribution of Indian scientist Jagadish Chandra Bose. The semiconductor diode C, if it's constructed a current rectifier using selenium in United States of America, circa 1886. His work did not result in any practical devices until it was revived in 1930s, where it found wide application is an efficient means of converting AC voltage to DC in industrial applications with relatively large power requirements. An 8 plate 160 volts to 450 milliampere's federal brand of selenium rectifier, typical structure of selenium rectifier. In 1901, Jagadish Chandra Bos, the India representing electronics, a professor of physics in Calcutta, India, filed a United States patient patent for a gallon crystal point contact semiconductor diode for detecting radio signals, beginning in mineral samples to assess their rectification properties. He filed a patent for a silicon point to market cat's whisker. Crystal radio detectors is probably the first company to make and sell commercial silicon semiconductor devices. Many other inventors experimented with alternative materials. Henry Dunwoody received a patent for a carborundum silicon carbide. Carborundum is nothing but silicon carbide detector just two weeks after uh, Picard. Vichy Tarikata earned a Japanese patent for a mineral detector in 1908. This is all about the history and the discovery of the semiconductor diode. Although semiconductor devices allowed simple radio sets to operate without external power by the mid 1920s, the more the predictable performance of vacuum tube diodes replaced them in most radio applications. Semiconductors regained prominence in World War II as uh, radar detectors because of their ability to operate at microwave frequencies. This is our great scientist Jagadish Chandra Bose from Calcutta, India and his work regarding the semiconductor diode junction the electrode alloy for tin and cadmium, cadmium selenide and selenium drill hole. This is the construction of semiconductor diode. The great Indian scientist Jagadish Chandra Bose, brother of Subhash Chandra Bose, the great patriot of our motherland India. Diodes and transistors. The diodes, a circuit element, encourages current to flow in only one direction as we have discussed in the previous class. It has two terminal structure of a vacuum tube diode unlike the transistor which has three. We are already discussed in the last class regarding the distinguish between a diode and a triode and its origin and the discovery. In the transistor, let us discuss today about the transistor current can flow in more than one direction. Both diodes and transistor moderate currents direction and voltage. Sir John Ambrose Fleming in 1849 to 1945 was an English electrical engineer and physicist known primarily for inventing in 1904 the first vacuum tube. It was also called the thermionic wall. Do you know, my dear friend, thermionic wall is a important thing in the semiconductor devices continued by diodes and transistors. Thermo means heat. Ionic wall relating to heat, thermionic wall, vacuum diode cannot run, thermionic tube or Fleming wall. It can be termed by different terminology for thermionic wall, vacuum diode, cannot run, cannot run thermionic tube or Fleming wall. 
You can remember any one of them, no problem. Fleming made numerous contributions not only to electronics but also to the photometry, the electric measurements and wireless telegraphy. He became a consultant uh, to Edison Electric uh, Light Company and a popular teacher at University College. He was knighted in 1929 for the many advances he had made electrical and electronic engineering. Fleming was the author of more than 100 scientific papers and books, including the influential the alternative current transformer in 1889, the principles of electric wave telegraphy in 1996, the propagation of electric currents in telephone and telegraph conductors in 1911, and memoirs of scientific life in 1934. So, Dyer's entire transistors continued by Fleming vacuum tube was based on the effect of Thomas on Edison discovered in 1880s and had not put to useful work at that time at that moment. One of the Edison's inventors, William Joseph Hammer, 1858 to 1934, working in Thomas Edison's laboratory, noted the rectifier effect when he added another electrode to a heated filament light bulb. Hammer was in charge of testing early light globes in 1880 to 81 and noted a blue glow around the positive pole in a vacuum bulb and a blackening of the wire and the bulb at the negative pole. This unknown phenomena was first called Hammer's phantom shadow. This is the history and the discovery of the Edison effect. But when Edison patented the bulb in 1883, it became known as Edison effect. Thomas Alva Edison, the great scientist. His contributions are many. The Fleming's make vacuum tube essentially consisted of an incandescent light bulb with an extra electrode inside. When the bulb's filament is heated white hot, electrons are boiled off its surface and into vacuum inside the bulb. If the extra electrode, also called a plate or an ad, is made more positive than the hot filament, a direct current flows through the vacuum and since the extra electrode is cold and the filament is hot, this current can only flow from the filament to the electrode, not the other way. So, AC signals can be converted into DC. Alternative current signals can be converted into direct current signals. This is uh, Thomas Alva Edison, great scientist on those days and uh, it is his uh, first filament. The Edison effect was the name given to the phenomenon the Edison observed. Thomas Alva Edison observed 1875 and refined later in 1883 while he was trying to improve his new incandescent lamp. The effect was that in the vacuum electrons flow from a heated filament like an incandescent lamp filament to cooler metal plate. This is the circuit diagram with respect to Edison effect. So this is the heating filament in the during the discovery of electric bulb. This is Thomas Alva Edison in his good old laboratory. The electric circuits and electronic circuits. Let us discuss about the electric circuit and the electronic circuit, a close association between the two electric circuit as well as the electronic circuits. The electric circuits are connections, conductive weights and other devices whereby the uniform flow of electric charges occurs. The electronic circuits add a new dimension to electric circuits in that some means of control is exerted over the flow of electric charges by another electrical signal, either a voltage or a current. Switches control the flow of electric charges as do potentiometers, especially when connected as variable resistors or it's a called resistors are also called as rheostats, the old terminology. Switches and uh, rheostats controls the flow of electric charges according to the positioning of a mechanical device which is actuated by some physical force external to the circuit. 
In electronics, however, we are dealing with special devices able to control the flow of electric charges according to another flow of electric charges or by the application of static voltage. In other words, in an electric circuit, electricity is able